is the lesser known math and today I have a very short list of super interesting things about Gregory Perelman who quite famously proved the 100 years old conjecture of Poincaré in uh, topology and refused the $1 million prize of the Clay Institute. And if you're not familiar with uh, some basic facts about Perelman and his story, I recommend the first source in the description below, which uh, is a link to a very nice documentary about uh, the life of Perelman. Fact one is related to the sister of Perelman. First, his mom was also a mathematician, and this is widely known, it's mentioned also in the movie. However, the mom of Perelman abandoned her doctoral thesis in order to take care of Perelman himself and his sister. What is not that well known is that the sister was also a mathematician and she uh, got her PhD from the famous Weizmann Institute in Israel and her topic was related also to some surfaces and Lie algebras and stuff not that far from the expertise of Perelman. Fact 2 is titled The CV Request from Princeton. So, except solving the Poincaré conjecture, Perelman also solved another famous conjecture which was uh, just 20 years old. Uh, it was called the Sol conjecture. And after this happened, around 1994, he immediately got offers from both Princeton and Stanford for permanent positions. However, Perelman rejected both offers and in the later year, 1995, he returned back to St. Petersburg in the Stekhov Institute and he just stayed there. This can be even found in Wikipedia, but what is interesting here is that according to one source, Perelman actually rejected Princeton just because they requested from him to send a resume if uh, he wants the position there. He was just too annoyed by that, thinking his results and the lectures he gave there were more than enough for them to, to offer him a tenure track position, which was probably true. According to another source, Perelman was just too annoyed by Princeton that they pushed uh, very hard and wanted from him immediate answer. So what is the actual truth? We'll probably never know, except if he decides to, to speak about that. Fact 3 is about the IMO participation of Perelman and the anti-Semitism he faced in Russia. First, it's widely known that Perelman participated in the International Mathematical Olympiad in 1982, where he got a perfect score of 42 points. However, it is unclear to me whether Perelman enjoyed math competitions that much, simply because he took part in a single International Mathematical Olympiad. Certainly, Perelman could have qualified for the Soviet team in some of the other years, but he didn't uh, try to do that, uh, I suppose. Perhaps an important reason for Grisha to participate in math Olympiads were his Jewish origins. And let me explain more about that. So, in the 80s, as a Russian boy from Jewish origins, you had two ways to get into the Leningrad University, the, the top university there. So the first option was to get one of the two spots separated for Jewish kids. And the second option was to qualify for the International Mathematical Olympiad by getting into the Soviet team. So Perelman tried the second option and that's why I think this uh, major goal was just to get accepted into the university. So these facts might be very surprising for some people who think that Soviet Russia was an antipode of uh, Nazi Germany when it comes to anti-Semitism, but obviously this was not the case. Even in the 80s, to, to get into their top universities as a Jew, it was extremely difficult and they, they had quotas. So another very interesting fact about this International Mathematical Olympiad in 1982 was that there were just three people who got a perfect score and another participant in the same Olympiad was Noam Elkis, who is another really famous and very creative mathematician. Every year attends the Putnam competition and he proposes some alternative solutions to, to many of the most difficult problems. However, Elkis just scored 40 out of 42 at this Olympiad, so 
obviously Perelman outperformed him. At the end I'm giving links to three really hilarious videos about Perelman. They're in the WASP three links in the description below. I don't think it's right to take this money. Idiot! Just to clarify, I'm not a fan of such kind of fun that someone could make from Perelman. Also given the fact that according to uh, his great biographer Gessen, Perelman probably suffers from autism variation. Despite that, the videos are very funny, so you can enjoy them and if you want to hear more lesser known stuff. Готово. Мама, я ваш сканворд разгадал. Молодец, неси сюда, мама выиграет тысячу рублей.